And um, I agree with you guys. I, 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 you know what? I, I think, and I don't know, that's what I actually called you about. Uh, I'm doing an interview with Mercola in about a half an hour. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to talk to you before I did this. I, I don't know about you, but they are not giving information out now. They, you know, oh, it's in our food supply now. And it, they found it in Tokyo water supply now. But it's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. You know, I, I, if they're finding it in the Tokyo water supply and in their, well, food supply is fine. It's going to be in their food supply because it's going to be, you know, contaminate the ground. But I think that they're not being forthcoming. I think that uh, that fourth reactor is probably already melted down or in the process of melting down. And I don't know if that's the case or not. We'll find out over time. But I, I think that they're going to be paying for this for a long, long time. And uh, I think the world's going to pay for this um, for a long, long time. And uh, I think there's going to be financial repercussions. And, and, you know, I think the health repercussions and the, there's going to be big health repercussions in Japan for this. In the U.S., I don't know yet. You know, we'll have to see if this if there's there's enough to. You know, I don't think it's going to take much to tip U.S. people over the edge for iodine because they're also damn deficient in it. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I was just calling to see what you thought about that. I'm. I, I'll tell you. The, the you can tell the media is getting bored with the story because it's you know it's it's kind of going away a little bit, but. They're not giving me any. I'm not getting any reassurance from any of these people. Well, George, uh, I just went down to the beach with my family, and it was just a stunningly magnificent moment there to walk. I walk. It was a super low tide because of the super moon coming t- tonight, and uh, the the water was perfectly calm. The, I mean, just just can't describe walking out very far into the ocean because it was very shallow. And uh, I walked out alone and feeling this whole subject, feeling how fortunate I was and how I wish everybody could be walking out into the same beach and ocean with me. And uh, I saw the reports this morning, and I'm just publishing an essay, uh, another post right now, which includes, of course, the information about the iodine in the water and the uh, starting to spread into the food supply. And this is just the beginning. Um, and one can almost, and I agree, uh, we can feel the change in the media. They're now going into full blast double speak, meaning every time they mention anything dangerous, very dangerous and very bad news, they also say it's not such bad news because it's really safe and it's really not so bad and it's really low level and low level and low level. And uh, these people who are in control of the media, they have no idea about what anything to do with low level radiation or low level heavy metal toxicity or low level chemical toxicity. These people just, you know, they just have no idea or they're so used to lying to themselves and everybody else. But what we have, uh, there was a, uh, one of the smartest, br- most brilliant mans in the United States. Uh, he's a physicist. Uh, he was number one graduate from Harvard University. I, I, his name is uh, Kaku. And he called uh, days ago, I guess it was five days ago, that they should pull the um, uh, Chernobyl uh, play on it, and they should be massing a fleet of helicopters from around the world or whatever and bury the place under sand. Totally agree with that. Sand totally agree with that. But uh, probably, now what, this is what I'm feeling, it's probably going to be too late to do that because this is a, like a, a building toxicity there. The, we know that we've had partial meltdowns. The place is out of control. It's getting hotter and the radiation is spreading and it'll become more and more difficult to approach it. Even hundreds of feet or hundreds of yards. Uh, so we might even you know, have to have suicide missions just to bury the place. It's, gonna, it's getting out of control. And yet, as you mentioned, the press is kind of, you know, like we can almost forget about it and just go back to eating McDonald's and Burger King and watching our favorite TV show. So I, it's, I'm very troubled. And um, it's a very troubling moment, and it's a bad moment to be in the Northern Hemisphere. That's how bad it is. I totally agree with that. And, you know, I don't think people 
in the nor in North America understand that, you know, okay, we're not going to get hit with these big doses Japan's getting hit with, but we don't have to get hit with those big doses. All we need is little doses because we're so damn iodine deficient and so toxic from everything else that it doesn't take much to throw you. We're already, we're already wobbling. It doesn't take much to throw a wobbling body off, of course, even more. So uh, let me ask you a question, David, uh, uh, for everybody who's listening. Beyond the iodine and beyond the uh, radioactive iodine, what would be the first steps you would do use to protect your patients or family against the other t types of uh, radioactive exposure, the cesium, plutonium, uranium? What well, would look, what would you look, be doing as a defensive detox or? Here, here's what I would. Here's what I. This this should, as you mentioned, and you and I have spoken about. I mean, the best thing we can get out of this is a wake-up call that people need to have their antioxidant defenses up as sort of force fields in advance of something like this happening. And, you know, you don't want to be reacting to a situation like this and changing what you're doing. So my feeling is if you have enough iodine, if you have enough vitamin C, if you have enough salt, if you have enough water, if you're not dehydrated, you know, and we get exposed to low levels of this stuff, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, but it is a big deal if you're none of the above. So I, what, what can people do? I mean, I think a couple of basic things people can do is, number one, maintain hydration. Dehydration is one of the biggest problems I see in the vast majority of my patients. There makes them low voltage. It makes them more toxic. It, none of the hormones work well, none of the, you know, makes them uh, nutrient deficient, so they need to hydrate. And I think a second major basic thing they can do is to, um, to take vitamin C mm -hmm. and to ensure adequate levels of vitamin C, which vitamin C can permeate every cell in the body. It can keep oxidant stress from going out of control and oxidant stress from radiation from going out of control, it can help detox the body. And I think if if this plume of radiation starts coming over to us, then people need to increase their vitamin C as as a basic rule of thumb, just a basic you know sort of like breathing. Um, and then I would say a third thing that people can do is to ensure they have adequate salt in their diet. And salt is a great detoxifier. It supplies minerals for the body, keeps the pH up, keeps the voltage up. Um, and I just think those are just some basic fundamental items besides, as you and I both know, eating correctly and cutting out fast food and cutting out soda and, and um, you know, eating healthy foods, you know, which supply all these things for the body. And this, this, could be our wake-up call that you know you don't have to panic when something happens in the world. Mm -hmm. You're already doing the right thing, and and, and uh, you'll survive. You know, and granted, look, if a nuclear bomb goes off, you're not going to survive if you're in the middle of a nuclear bomb. But you know, you don't have to worry about what am I going to do now because you've already done things to prevent your body from absorbing some of this stuff. When you mention salt, you're talking common salt, or you're talking about a real salt or Himalayan salt or uh, real. Salt talking unrefined sea salt, such as Himalayan salt or Celtic salt or Himalayan salt. I think they're all good salt. I've had all three analyzed. They're all free of toxic. Well, they've, I've had them. I've had uh, real salt and Celtic salt analyzed four times each. They're all free of toxins. Um, and I've had Himalayan salt analyzed twice, which was also free of toxins. And I think all three are good versions of unrefined salt, which can keep the detox pathways open and supply the right minerals for the body. Well, this sounds sound very good, good, good advice, I think, David, the, especially starting with um, hydration. I think people need to, to pay attention to the basics. Um, vitamin C is a universal thing for the cells, so it is a good starting point. On top of that, I, of course, recommend the magnesium and the, um, the iodine, the bicarbonate. Uh, clay and on and on and on glutathione and there are many things as we get more and more sophisticated have more time and more money but uh, I think the mo I personally think the most important thing right now are the basics 
And, then, and the starting point would be repletion of minerals. So the salt is very good in that, that aspect. Um, repleting the bicarbonate levels, the hydration levels. I think this is wonderful advice and a wonderful type of medicine for the masses. People can respond You're and right. do something that's possible to do. Already the iodine is becoming difficult because everybody panicked and cleaned out the, the iodine stocks from probably most of the suppliers in the country. So it's an interesting moment. Interesting moment. And a, troub a troubling one, yeah? Troubling one, but you know, it could be a learning moment. And it, hopefully it'll be a moment when people start to say, hey, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to react to things. I want to be proactive and do the right thing in advance where you don't have to worry about reacting to a situation like this. So I want to mirror that point because what that really translates is what, it, it, it doesn't make sense to wait for the government to advise you what to do and when to do it. Uh, like with the iodine, wait for the cloud to about hit you and then take a 120 milligram dose. You know, it's, it's, now is the time to start uh, defensive strategies to, you know, to, to eliminate the, like the negative type of you know, garbage diet, to replete the, uh, uh, the water levels in the body and the vitamin C levels. Don't have to wait for them to say it's dangerous. We know that there's an increasing level of uh, radioactivity is going to be floating down the jet stream. How much it's going to be, we don't know yet, but we know there's going to be some. It's already been declared to have arrived, so there's some instruments measuring this stuff. So we need to start acting and uh, stocking up in our medicinal cabinets what we need. And um, there's not going to be enough to go. My concern is... Even, even with the vitamin C, there's not enough vitamin C to go around for everybody. The government should have, been, have planned this. It shouldn't be just iodine. It should be vitamin C stocks and be recommending that and having it warehoused for the public in such an emergency. But they, they didn't prepare for us, so it's up to the individual to prepare for themselves at this point. It is up for the individual. And when more individuals decide they're going to take vitamin C, industry will make more. The free market will rise to the occasion. They'll make more because people can make money on it. Yeah. And there will be enough for everybody if people take advantage of this. But not in, you're right, not in a crisis situation. Right. Okay, David. Well, thank you very much.